Hey guys, what's going on? It is week number five of Storytime with Taffy. Before I go ahead and get started, want to let you know, as always, positive comments and feedbacks. I mean, I'll take the negative. Y'all can send me the negative, but everything's been almost universally positive towards this series, so that's flattering, it's humbling, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'll keep saying it every week, so if you are somebody who gets turned off by being thanked every week, you might want to find a new show, because I'm going to do it. This week's topic comes from FryGuy1414, who says, Taffy, what was your most embarrassing school moment? And to keep this from being an epic novel, I'm just going to have to hit some of the finer points and then dive right into the incident. I have a friend that if you watch this show for an extended period of time, if we run this for months, you'll hear more stories about this friend. We'll say Simon. We'll call him Simon. Why not? Why not? We'll call him Simon. Simon and I have been friends since the fourth grade. We shared a locker together. We went to the same church in a town of about 7,000. We ran in the same circles, we played the same sports, we were inseparable through high school, and we started to be that way in college. He and I had kind of a friendly rivalry, like a brother rivalry, like times you get really pissed at each other, but you kill to defend each other, because he was resentful of the fact that his parents made him work for everything. Like, he was never handed a free anything. He even went through a period of time where he would steal. He would steal and, and, and shoplift quite a bit. And I actually got to a place where I, because he was my brother and you don't always want your brother to get in trouble, I would help him even though I thought it was wrong and my parents never let me want for anything. Like, I, I take that back. My parents let me want for things, but they didn't let me need anything. His parents would actually let him need things. My side of the story is that I had this best friend, Simon, and he is like Brad Pitt and Matt Damon had a kid. Like, for all the material things that I had, and I, I don't want to say like my family was rich, I was just given more than he was given. Uh, we, we went through bankruptcy and we were incredibly poor in my youth. I had repo men take a couch out from underneath me while I slept when I was nine years old. We just, I had more than he had. Uh, my thing was that I wanted girls and he had girls. Like, that was it. The kid had six-pack abs, not a hair on his body that wasn't supposed to be there. Like, blonde, dishwater blonde, dishwater blonde surfer hair was voted like best smile or something like that in the yearbooks for like years on end. So I would have girls who would come up to me, like girls I had crushes on that would walk up to me and like, <laughs> hey Ryan, and say, yeah. I was just wanting to ask you something. Um, um, do you have Simon's phone number? And I just, you know, the bottom would fall out. I'd be like, oh, yeah, here it is. So yeah, he and I had a rivalry that, that grew out of both of us envying each other, but we admired each other and we were, we were great friends until we got to college. I went to a different college. He dropped out of college. He started drinking more. He ran with a crowd that wasn't like me. Like we had no problem standing up to each other. We physically would fight from time to time, but we would hug it out afterwards and be even stronger friends because of it. He started running with a crowd that, in my opinion, started to, to worship him, like idol worship, because the guy was a, he was a badass snowboarder, he whitewater rafted, he free climbed rocks, like he was just the, one of the, like he was Bear Grylls, like it, basically he was Bear Grylls with a punk rock attitude. So we went our different ways, and I got new friends, and he got new friends, and then he moved to the city where I was going to college. And I was a resident advisor. I was living in the dorms, helping incoming sophomore and freshman people get acclimated with college life. The problem was, I was a 21-year-old who had worked his ass off in the gym all summer to get fit, bought a new wardrobe, was kind of handsome to begin with, but now was a 21-year-old authority figure in a dorm that was predominantly 18 and 19-year-old incoming freshman female athletes. Take a second to wrap your head around that, because... If you can't score any sort of lovin's in that sort of environment, I, it might be prostitute time. Like I don't want to, I don't want to rub it in or nothing. But I mean, it really might be pay for sex time. So my buddy has a bit of a role reversal where, for the first time in our history, I have what he has, and I don't want anything. I don't have anything to envy. And he, like I said, he's been kind of drinking and running with this wrong crowd, and I'm not there to sort of regulate it. I don't want to say that I was everything, but I feel like I was a part of it. The university I went to, Boise State, is a dry campus, and that means no alcohol on campus near the near the dorms. There's one dorm for 21 and older, like older students, where you can have like a six-pack in the fridge. But other than that, it's a dry campus. I was only allowed to go out a couple nights a week because I would have to patrol the dorms like one of the many functions that a resident advisor serves is I have to walk around and make sure no parties no wild whatever no people shaving creaming the windows or whatever dumb shit college 
kids did. So I finally get a night where I can go out and do something. I go out to a bar, hang out with some friends, and what I don't realize is that Simon shows up at my dorm where I had a few friendly female flingadings going on and I told him about it because we were friends we had been friends for over a decade he shows up at the dorm where I'm an RA drunk off his ass carrying a literally a plastic gallon jug of cheap vodka that he's just tugging off of and he's walking around hey hey where's Ryan Anybody see Ryan? And one of my friends who was an RA grabs him and doesn't want me to get in trouble because I have I have inadvertently let this evil influence into the dorm. So she and a girl that I had had a physical relationship recently were looking out for me and they drag this guy into a room and they try to keep him there. So that if I come back, I can deal with my friend and try to handle the situation and there's a limited amount of residual damage done to me and my reputation and my image and all that kind of stuff. So I get there and he's gone. But I hear this story, that he is sitting there with this RA friend of mine and with this girl with whom I, I've been sleeping with, and he reaches over, drunk off his ass, and pulls open this girl's blouse and tries to look down her shirt, and she, understandably, is upset and slaps his hand away and screams, you know, what the hell are you doing? What's going on? And he goes, hey, hey, shh, 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 don't worry about it. Ryan told me all about it. It's cool. So that was the situation I had to come deal with, is that... Nobody should kiss and tell, but if you get into a situation, especially for me, where that was a situation that I wasn't used to, where I wasn't used to being quote-unquote the man, I got into a situation, I went to the only guy I knew of that had ever been the man before, and I told him all about it because I was kind of proud, and I was kind of confused because I didn't know the rules of the game, and I told him about it, and what he did was got drunk off his ass on vodka, went back to where I worked, and tried to grope one of the girls that I'd messed around with, and then told her that I basically said it was okay for him to do that. So, fortunately, I, I, I talked to everybody, I had to do a fair a bit of begging to get back in good graces with some people but things things were fixed i guess things minimal damage was done and that was kind of our breaking off point years later he admitted to me that he had been kind of jealous of my situation and after a lot of drinking it seemed like the right idea to go in there and kind of blow my thing up he and i don't really hang out or talk anymore which is too bad because really for the better part of a decade we were thick as thieves so that was kind of that was like the most embarrassing thing that i can think of where i came back and literally my face must have gone beet red and blush because i was just mortified by what had happened so i uh, yeah, I mean, kind of a down story. Sorry. Uh, but I mean, when you ask a, you know, when you ask a down question, you get a down answer. Um, that's it. Episode five is in the books. I'm Taffy. And on behalf of the Mr. Wiffles channel, do me a favor. If you have Twitter, go there. And the Shorty Awards are coming up, which are awards for mass media. And I'm trying to get folks to go vote for Robert. All you have to do is tweet. The guy edits for hours on end to produce a four minute PA video. And as Hutch said, it is some of the best editing on Respawn. So, this is not about him winning, this is not about us getting famous, this is about me trying to help people say thank you to my friend who edits his balls off every week so that we can have an interesting four minute video every Monday. Head there, links, uh, links down in the description. Give me some comments to read down below. Guys, you know I love you, I will see you here next time, same time, Wednesday next week, Storytime with Taffy, episode number six. On behalf of the Mr. Wiffles channel, this is Taffy, I am out.